What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ardell and in today's video we cover one of the most aggressive and dangerous chess opening systems for E4 players against the Sicilian defense with the Grand Prix attack. Now this is one of my favorite openings for white as I've been playing it since I was just a kid and in this video I'm going to be showing you all some of the best responses from black so that you're prepared for whatever comes your way and I'm also going to be recommending some lines and variations for white that aren't as common but in my opinion are simply better than what you use usually see. In fact, there is a never seen before chess opening trap, which I just discovered, which can help you win the game against one of the most popular and common responses from black in just 12 moves. I myself am a Sicilian defense player as black, and this is one of the openings which I least like going against. It's hard to play against as there's so many tricks and traps, and it really looks to take away counterplay from the Sicilian player. The Grand Prix itself against the Sicilian starts off with the move knight c3. By playing this move, we are avoiding the main line of playing knight f3 and breaking this game open. Instead, we're playing quietly, at least at the moment, but this actually turns out to be one of the most aggressive chess openings in the game. By playing this move, we're looking to really take control of the light squares on d5 and e4. We're gonna continue with moves like f4, knight f3, get this bishop out, castle kingside, and try to checkmate this king as fast as possible. Now really how we approach the rest of the opening and going into the middle game really does depend on how black plays, especially their pawn structure. We're going to first go over the main line of black playing knight c6 and then looking to fianchetto the bishop on g7, looking to really take control of that central d4 square. After this, we're going to cover what happens if black plays e6, looking to break through with a very quick d5 in the center of the board. And then lastly, what do we do against black if they just play quiet chess with e6 and d6? Let's first cover the main line of knight c6, followed by g6. Well, against this, we're simply going to continue with natural developmental chess, knight f3. And yet again, bishop g7 is the best move. However, I did want to mention, if you ever see the move e6 in a position like this, aka e6 and g6, I personally really recommend breaking this game open. And look, this is not common for the Grand Prix attack, but the whole idea here is that following something like c takes d4 and knight takes d4, these dark squares on d6, e7, all the way down to h6 are extremely weak. In fact, if black plays bishop g7 here, we could play knight d to b5 looking to check the king on d6. And if black plays a move like a6 looking to prevent our knight from coming to b5, that's completely okay. We're just going to continue with bishop e3, take that knight on c6. And now the very next move, we really do have a ton of options. One of them is playing the move e5 looking to really clamp down on both d6 and f6. We can also play bishop c5, breaking through on d6, e7, and f8. We can throw our queen into d6, or even play knight a4, eyeing both c5 and b6. We have a ton of different options here, but white is more than better. So again, guys, against a move like e6, whenever you see e6 and g6 together, break that game open, and their dark squares are simply going to give white a much better opening position. Now, what do we do against the move bishop g7? Well, one of the main ideas of the Grand Prix attack is to actually purposely trade this bishop on f1 for that knight on c6. In this position, we would love to take that knight and mess up black's pawn structure, but the best move for black here is knight d4. I mean, if they're going to put all this effort into playing knight c6 and bishop g7, you might as well take that d4 square, right? Well, in this position, we're really not going to worry about the knight by trying to take it off the board, but simply castle kingside. And now against knight takes b5, we're going to take back with our knight. And now in this position, black really does have three main options. The main line is playing the move d5, but we're first going to take a look at the move d6. What happens if black just plays quietly here with a move like d6? Well, now we're going to be playing the moves d3 followed by queen e1, which is really the main idea of the Grand Prix attack. We're going to put our pawns on the light squares of c2 all the way down to e4 and look to play queen e1 followed by queen h4 and really try to put some pressure on the king side of the board here. Now, obviously, we're not always going to have a knight on this somewhat strange looking b5 square but notice by playing the moves d3 and queen e1 we're not really in a rush to bring this knight back in fact we're not going to waste a move doing that we're going to let black waste a move by playing something like a6 bishop d7 or queen b6 and then once they move to attack our knight we'll move it back but until then our knight is chilling 
on this b5 square now against the move like castling kingside we're going to continue with our plan of queen e1 to queen h4 now against a move like queen b6 we don't want to lose our piece so we're going to bring it back to c3 and if a move like queen c6 we're now going to play f5 again guys we're putting our pawns on the light squares of the board here to support this f5 push and look if black wants to take the pawn on f5 that's okay we're going to play bishop h6 if black wants to take a second pawn that is more than okay as we have knight g5 this is one of the most dangerous ideas in the grand prix attack by putting our queen on h4 putting our bishop on h6 and then throwing our knight on g5 I and mean, we have so much firepower on this side of the board for example if black plays a move like bishop e6 trying to somehow get some defensive presence over here we're simply going to play bishop takes g7 and against king takes g7 the key idea rook takes f6 absolutely beautiful idea take that bishop off the board take the knight off the board notice here if e takes f6 we simply have a mate in one and if king takes f6 we have queen h6 check and following king e5 we are down in material but there's also a king on e5. In fact, here white has a forced mate in four. Let me know down in the comment section below if you're able to find how white can checkmate this king in just four moves. And some of you may be thinking, look, I get it. We put that queen on h4. We're looking to play bishop h6 and knight g5. But what happens if black doesn't take that pawn on f5? Well, our plan really doesn't change. I mean, if a move like b5, we're going to play bishop h6. And now if a move like b4, we're simply going to bring that knight back to e4. This is one of the things I really do like about the Grand Prix attack is that if black spends all this time trying to create space on the queen side of the board, it only gives us more of an attacking presence against that king on g8. I mean, here if black plays something like c4, which by the way, does make a lot of sense. I mean, we do have a very strong pawn chain. Why not try to break the link? But in this position, we're not going to give the queen side the time of day. We're simply going to take that pawn on g6 and the very next move continue again with our knight g5 idea. If black wants to take our pawn on d3, we have yet again that idea of taking that bishop and then snatching that knight off the board. White is simply winning this position. So guys, that covers a move like d6. Black just playing quiet chess. I don't think d6 is really the best option because yet again, we play moves like d3, queen e1, queen h4, f5. We love to get that bishop h6 and knight g5 idea in there with our rook on f1 being very active. White has a very nice attacking game. What about the main line of playing d5? Now, most players in this position do take that pawn, but I personally think that e5 is a much better move. This performs better at the master and grandmaster level, and now it really does put the pressure on black. This is a hard position to play. Notice if a move like e6 is played, we simply have knight d6 with check, and now black really does have two options. They can play a move like a6, kicking our knight back, or the move d4. I do think that d4 is a better move, but the most popular option from black is a6. The reason I don't really think this is very good is because it just makes the game for white too easy. I mean, we play knight c3, and the very next move, we're going to break through with d4. Now, notice going a couple moves back, if black plays d4, we're simply going to play knight e4, and I like white's game there. And if black doesn't play d4, yet again, we're going to break through in the center of the board. If a move like c takes d4, we're going to centralize our queen, attacking that pawn on d5. If the bishop ever wants to take our knight, that's okay. We're going to take back with the rook. And now against a move like e6, we have queen b4 really activating this queen, attacking that pawn on b7, and really getting a scope all the way down to f8. And if a move like b5, we can play bishop e3, looking to put that bishop on c5, forming a battery ram on the a3 down to f8 diagonal, where we're going to have a very nice control of the dark squares. So against a move like a6, we're simply going to play knight c3, ready to meet d4, with knight e4 and if black doesn't play d4 we're going to play d4 ourselves take control of the dark squares and white is simply better now what if black plays d4 right away the reason i think this is better is that it makes this positioning of the knight a little bit awkward i mean it can't go back to c3 now but i still think that white is completely fine we're going to play the move c3 immediately putting pressure on that pawn with both of our knights and now our pawn on c3 we would love to take that pawn so here the best move for black is to now play a6 force our knight back to a3 and notice here i mean if a move like d3 black trying to really create some space 
down the center of the board here, we have queen a4 with check. This knight may look bad, but it's actually a pretty strong minor piece with potential knight c4 and knight b6 ideas. Now notice in this position, if black plays a move like b5, we simply have queen e4 attacking the rook, and the very next move, we have queen c6 check, and we are about to win that pawn on c5. So b5 doesn't really give black the better game because of queen e4 followed by queen c6 winning that pawn. What about the move bishop to d7? Well, against this, we simply have queen to c4 attacking both the pawn on c5 and the pawn on d3. And yet again, black cannot defend both. We're simply going to be up a pawn. What about the move queen d7? Not moving that bishop, not playing b5, but moving the queen up. Well, in this case, I actually like taking that queen off the board and then playing knight c4. Again, this is not a bad piece. We're playing knight c4, wanting to bring that knight into b6. And it's true, this pawn on d3 is making our life a little bit difficult, especially for this bishop on c1. But with the combination of this knight b6 idea, which black cannot stop, and on top of that, us having knight e1 attacking that pawn, followed by rook f3 doubling up on the pawn, I think that a white is simply better. This is a strong pawn in one sense, but at the same time, it's going to be very hard, if not impossible, to defend. So that covers the move d5. The main line is taking that pawn, but honestly, I think if black plays that perfectly, black is the one with the edge. I think instead we need to play the move e5, making this a bad bishop. And as y'all could see, white has a very comfortable game. What happens if black doesn't move the pawn at all? Not to d6 or not to d5 but instead plays the move knight f6. Well, against this, guys, we're simply going to steamroll this knight with e5, and the very next move, play d4. I mean, white is simply in a better position here. Idea being if she takes d4, we're not going to take back with one of the knights, but get our queen in this game, attack that knight on d5. Notice here if a move like knight c7, we're going to win the pawn on a7 and if a move like knight b6 is played we have a4 expanding on the queen side of the board with a5 ideas in the air we are up a ton of development here black has a very awkward position a terrible knight on b6 a terrible bishop on g7 this bishop on c8 can't even move the queen can't move to c7 white is simply better so y'all, that covers the main line of knight c6 and g6. Now what about the other very popular option from black of playing e6, looking to break through with a very soon, maybe even immediate d5 option? Well, against this, we're simply going to play f4, and against a move like knight c6, we're going to play knight f3. Now the big question is what to do whenever black does break through with that d5 idea. Do we take the pawn on d5? Do we push? We're instead going to keep the tension. We're simply going to play bishop b5 in this position, attacking that knight on c6. Remember, guys, in the Grand Prix attack, one of the main ideas is to play bishop b5 and take that knight, really looking to damage black's pawn structure. And now black has a pretty big decision to make, and that's what to do with this pawn on d5. Does black want to play d4, expanding in the center of the board? Does black want to take the pawn on e4, or does black just want to leave the pawn there? and play a move like knight g e7. Well, let's first cover the move d4. When I first saw this, I was thinking, wait a second, isn't black just mowing down the center of the board with a huge space advantage? But it turns out that this is simply a mistake because we're gonna take that knight on c6 and the very next move, play knight e2. Now, yes, we did give up the bishop pair, but black's pawn structure is absolutely terrible. I mean, if a move like knight f6, we have d3, and now against bishop e7, we have a pretty normal looking grand prix attack type setup. We're gonna continue with queen e1, with queen g3 attacking g7 ideas, and I mean, just look at these pawns, guys, on c6 and c5. These are very weak. If black ever does want to play a move like bishop a6, trying to fix the pawn structure and get some counterplay, we will simply deny this by playing b3, and white is simply better. I mean, we have knight e5 ideas attacking that pawn on c6, knight g3 ideas, f5 is always in the air, activating that bishop. On top of that, moves like bishop a3 at certain points could be a good option, attacking that pawn on c5, which can't even move. White has a very nice game, as black does have the bishop pair, but the position is so closed and their pawn structure is so terrible that they really have nothing to show for it. So y'all, pushing does not work because we're going to play the intermediate move of taking that knight, followed by knight e2, d3, castle king side, and white has nothing to worry about. Now what happens if black doesn't push the pawn but captures the pawn 
on e4. Well, now we're going to again take that knight on c6, and notice here how black has isolated and double isolated pawns on the queen side. We're going to take back with the knight. We're ahead in development, and white is simply better. So in all honesty, guys, black pushing the pawn or taking the pawn, as tempting as that may be, is simply not good. The best move here for black is knight e7. And yet again, we face the question, what do we do with this pawn on e4? I now recommend taking that pawn on d5 and then playing queen e2. And at first sight, this may seem like a kind of awkward position for white. Black does have pawns right in the center of the board. Well, we have a pawn on f4, which is kind of just hanging out there, but this is actually a very tricky and difficult position for black to play. Again, we're wanting to play bishop takes e6. Notice here how the knight can't take because it's pinned to the king on e8. So in the case of us taking that knight, black would have to play b takes c6, and yet again, their pawn structure would be terrible on the queen side of the board. Notice how the move bishop d7 does not work because we simply win the pawn on e5. Now what about the move g6? Just simply trying to develop fianchetto that bishop and castle kingside. Now here again we could play a move like bishop takes c6 and that's completely fine but I personally think the best move here is queen e5 coming out of nowhere attacking that rook on h8. Again this knight cannot take the queen because it's pinned by the bishop on b5. And really what this does is force the move rook g8. And now the main line for white is both castling kingside and taking on c6. So these are the two most popular options. But I personally discovered this move queen e3, which is very strong. Notice how b6 cannot be played because we simply win that knight on c6. If a move like queen d6 is played, we have knight a4 putting even more pressure on that pawn. And really the big question here is, wait a second, isn't queen e3 just a terrible move? Why can't black just play d4, forking our knight and our queen? Well, now we have the beautiful idea of first taking that knight on c6 to mess up black's pawn structure and then playing knight e4. Notice here, if a move like bishop g7, we can play queen a3, ganging up on that pawn on c5. And if black takes our queen, we have knight f6 checkmate game over. So y'all going back to this knight e4 idea against d4. I mean this is just a crushing position for white. Black doesn't need to take the queen. But yet again I mean if a move like bishop g7. We continue with queen a3. And look at this queen and this knight on e4. Doubling up on that pawn. We're simply about to go up a pawn. I mean if black does try to save the pawn with a move like c4. We have knight d6 check followed by knight g5. Black can resign this game. So both bishop d7 and g6 can get black into trouble very quickly. What about the move bishop e6 from black? Well, at first sight, it makes it seem as if this knight can take back on c6. But now when we take that knight, b takes c6 is simply the best move because if the knight does take our bishop, we have f5 and we are about to go up a minor piece. All that being said, guys, I think in this position, the best move for black is not bishop d7, bishop e6, or g6, but queen to d6. And this is a very hard move to find. I doubt you're going to face this move unless they are very prepared for the chess opening theory. But even here, I think that white is better following bishop takes c6 with check. Now, if black takes back with the pawn, what was the point? of queen d6. So following queen takes c6, we're now going to play d4, expanding in the center of the board. Against the move bishop g4, I mean, when I first saw this position, again, I was thinking, gosh, this looks a little bit awkward for white. Our knight is pinned on f3, but there's nothing to worry about. We're going to take that pawn on c5, and against a move like queen takes e5, play bishop e3. And as y'all can see, white is up a ton of development. Three of our minor pieces out are queen on e2, castling queen side e3 as next, which would actually put our rook on d1, putting more pressure on that pawn on d5. So from a practical standpoint, I think it might be black's best option to play a move like queen c4. But against this, we're simply going to snatch that queen off the board. And again, castle queen side. The queens are off the board, but our attacking chances are far from over. We have knight b5 ideas. With that knight on b5, we would be attacking both c7 and d6. This rook on a8 is currently a prisoner to that pawn on a7 because of our bishop on e3. We have rook he1 ideas on the way, and white is simply better. So y'all, that covers what to do against e6 and d5. Again, we're going to play f4, knight f3, bishop b5, keep the tension in the center of the board, and if black doesn't play d4 or d takes e4, we're eventually going to take that pawn 
play queen e2, and white has a nice game. Now what happens if black plays very quiet, very slow positional chess with a move like d6, and against f4, knight e6, and then a move like e6. This is very reserved, black not trying to create too much trouble, but simply develop their pieces. But against this, I do think that again, White has a much better game. We're going to play bishop b5, and against a move like bishop d7, we're now going to castle kingside, and following bishop e7, continue with our normal plan of d3. And against a move like knight f6, we can go into our normal plan of the Grand Prix attack by playing a move like queen e1 and queen g3, putting some pressure on the kingside, and that's completely okay if that's what you prefer. But me personally, against black, with such a closed and kind of cramped position with these pieces, I like playing the move e5, attacking that knight. Now notice here, if the move knight d5 is played, we have knight e4 attacking that pawn on d6, in which case black's probably going to have to take our pawn on e5 anyways. And if black does take the pawn right now, we're going to take back with our f pawn. And against knight d5, yet again, we have knight e4 prepared. And now against a move like castle and kingside, we have c4. The key idea, kicking this knight back to a very awkward square like b6 or c7. And there's actually been three master grandmaster level games in which white played the move bishop takes c6, bishop g5, and queen e1 eyeing that g3 square. All of these three moves are completely okay, and there's even more options for white in this position. That's one of the things that I do like about the Grand Prix attack is that it gives you a lot of flexibility. And honestly, in this position, white is simply better. We have that pawn on e5 attacking both d6 and g6, making life very difficult for black. A very nice knight pair on e4 and f3, a solid rook on f1. Our queen, again, is going to get more active. And if you look at black's position here, they are very cramped and very awkward. I mean, these pieces can barely even move. Both the knights, both the bishops, the queen on d8, they are very cramped, while we have a very nice space advantage, and we're going to continue to put the pressure on our opponent. If you'd like to learn the theory behind the Vienna game, which is very similar to the Grand Prix in a lot of ways, but against the move e5, click the video to the left. If you'd like to learn my top 10 chess openings for black against the move d4, click the video to the right. Leave a comment below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.